Hey everybody and welcome to Let's Look at The Adventures of Shuggy. So this is a game that has just come out on Steam, uh, but was previously available on Xbox Live Arcade. Both of those versions are going for 10 bucks. This is a puzzle platformer and you know, if you look at other puzzle platformers, let's take a look at something like... How about VVVVVV? That is almost a puzzle platformer, but it's way more focused on like the platforming elements as opposed to the pu puzzle elements. And then you can take something like Braid, it's probably a little bit more focused on the puzzle elements and the platforming elements. I guess Adventures of Shuggy is somewhere in the middle. I would say maybe it's like 35% platforming, 65% puzzling. But anyway, without further ado, we're going to get started here. As I reach down, I will pick up my Xbox 360 controller because this game, you know, starting out on the Xbox, I figured that's the way it is probably meant to be enjoyed the best. Uh, i played about an hour of this so far, and I think I've got enough of an impression of this game to make, you know, a reasonable interpretation of how the rest of the game is going to be played out. So without further ado, let's just get started. So we are playing as Shuggy here. He is like a, a vampire sort of creature who has just moved into a house that he's discovered is haunted. I think it was his, like, grandmother's or something like that. And what we are at right now is basically our level select screen. So from here, every one of these rooms represents a different level. And every level is basically one screen that consists of a puzzle that must be solved. So let's go to uh, one of the really early levels. How about slam it? Avoid the spiky dudes and get the gems. So your goal on every single level of the Adventures of Shuggy is to collect all the gems. And when you get all of the gems, then the, the level will end. So you can see here we've got some enemies to deal with. If they land on top of us, of course, we will find ourselves in a terrible position. And the controls here are very, very, very sim simplistic, which is actually something that I think really works in the game's favor. Uh, let's, let's go to this level instead. Seesaw. Uh, so all the controls that I have right now are basically uh, like moving left and right on the analog stick to move left and right in the real world. But what's crazy is that moving left actually causes you to move right. No, that is not true. Uh, I'm a bold-faced liar, of course. You guys understand how this works. Um, and A to jump. But the cool thing is, every single level, particularly as you move forward, has an action button on it that is performed uh, using the right trigger. And every single room has a different action. I'm not going to say that, that every single room has maybe a unique action for that action button, uh, but I will say that every single room that I've come across so far has, some, like, not the same as the one before it, if any... I don't know if this makes any sense. Let's try out one of these ones and hopefully it will make sense. Okay. So in this one, uh, we learn one of the main things that we... one of the main archetypes, I guess, for using this action button, which is uh, rotation. So... Uh, by using the analog stick, we obviously cause our player to face in one direction or another. And if we're facing the left and we rotate, it'll rotate counterclockwise. If we are facing the right and we rotate, it will rotate clockwise. So our goal on this level is just to get this gem to go to the very end of the level. So I think a couple of rotations here. One there. Uh, maybe one. Ah, I gotta do it the other way. Okay, let's do it this way. Uh, so obviously all we're trying to do here is rotate this gem until the very end of the level. And this is kind of cool because we can't actually... Yeah, like that. We, we can't actually rotate our player. I want to make sure to do it like this. Oh, that was bad. Okay. Uh, as you know, I'm, I'm dog shit at puzzlers, so you got to give me some time here to, to really get it done. Okay, and then one more rotate here. As you can see, we can't really move, so we got to get the, the gem to come to us. I'll be able to get that easily. Apparently, I did get a new best time. Uh, so, you know, sometimes the action button will be that. It'll allow you to rotate your surroundings. Sometimes, let's see if we can find another level. Uh, I can't remember the names of them. Maybe the Weeblet? If you hold the door open longer, you'll have more time to get through. Okay, sometimes sometimes uh, we have level mechanics like this. This is a level that I've seen quite often so far. One second, actually. I, I want to restart this level. I think I've, <laughs> I've done a poor job. Uh, so, where's our character here? So we'll pick up all of these, and then we will just stand on top of this. And this switch will obviously open that door that you can see at the bottom right. And then when the clock runs out... Our past self, this is very, very Brady right here, our past self, oh god, that was horrible, let's try that again. Uh, our past self will appear, maybe I should just get all of the gems first. Uh, and our past self will appear, and our, pa our past self, of course, if you've ever played Braid, is going to go up there and step on the switch. Oh man, that was terrible again, let's try that again. Uh, our past self is going to go up there, step on the switch, and when he does step on the switch, of course, that will open the door. And when it opens the door, we will walk through in our current state, and then hopefully we will find ourselves in a better position than I was in a few seconds ago. So by using right trigger, I can speed up time to make this go a little bit faster. Oh, almost. Oh, this doesn't kill me. It just creates a barrier. So actually, I did not do nearly as well. Don't hurt me. Don't hurt me, goblin. Uh, I didn't even get close to my best time on this one. 
But you can see the basic mechanics of how to defeat this level. Oh man, we're gonna hit another time cycle here. Come on, platform. You're, you're making a fool out of me here. The point that I'm mainly trying to get across... Oh god! <laughs> I very nearly messed it up. Let's try it again. Uh, the point that I'm trying to get across is that... Uh, you know, for most puzzlers... Let's, let's take a look at another good puzzler that came out recently. Uh, Off, Offspring Fling. Uh, you can easily describe that game in most puzzle games by their gimmick. So the gimmick in Offspring Fling is, okay, you can like pick up your children and throw them to try to get to the end of the level. The gimmick in Braid, and I hate to say this because it's a game that is above gimmicks, but the gimmick is time travel, right? You can go back in time, forward in time, some objects aren't affected by time. Uh, the gimmick in The Adventures of Shuggy so far is there's a lot of gimmicks. So basically every single room will be different than the one before. Let's check out Walk the Line. I haven't seen this one before. So this is Keep Your Balance. Okay, so we also end up in levels like this a lot where gravity is shifted for one reason or another, like, you know, VVV, VVV style, and it forces you, uh, actually it gives me pretty substantial motion sickness to do this, but it forces you to, uh, you know, think about the level from a different perspective. So you're thinking about, okay, okay, am I jumping now? I I'm jumping in this direction, and I'm, I'm actually t rotating my head 90 degrees to the left here. 90 degrees counterclockwise, I should say. Now let's try to land on this pla- there we go. I'm actually surprised that that worked out as good as it did. There we go, and we managed to get them there. And every time you defeat a level for the first time, it's not really defeat, it's probably the wrong word to be using here. Uh, but every time you beat a level for the first time, you get a key. And as you can see, there are other kind of overworlds that we can come across. Let's go check out the boiler room really quickly, because this is one example of it. This is like our first, this is our starting world, for lack of a better word. Uh, when you get like 9 keys or 11 keys or something, you can go to the boiler room, and the boiler room will open up. Uh, all these other levels that have different mechanics in them as well. So let's check out Revolving Door. Get into the revolving area to access the center of the map. So what's going on here? It really, and I'm, again, I'm not going to say that every single level does things a, like does substantially differently, but it does seem that there's, you know, like a few, maybe a dozen different archetypes for levels. Like there's some levels where you really have to worry about enemies. There's some levels where you're really worrying about switch puzzles. There's other levels where uh, you're mostly just concerned... Oh, get inside of this. Uh, other levels where you're mostly just concerned with... Oh, how do I get into that rotating part? Oh, I guess, yeah, I can wait until we get up here, okay. Um, where you're mostly concerned with, um, what's, what's the other thing that I've shown out so far? Yeah, mostly concerned with, like, getting your past, stel past self to stand on switches. Uh, oh, I don't like this at all. Spider-Man, get out of the way. Um, and that should do it for us, provided, yeah, I didn't touch the spider, I got lucky there. Uh, there's other levels. One more mechanic that we haven't really seen is um, the mechanic of multiple shuggies, which is basically like you'll come into a level, maybe this one here, the spike conveyor. Run around with the spike balls to collect the gems. Okay, um, okay, I see how this works. Oh, this is scary. I probably won't have a chance to talk for a second here. Okay, but there's other levels where there's multiple shuggies, and each shuggy is kind of affected by gravity in a different direction. Like, some of them uh, will be like shuggy on the level that we did. Ooh, I thought I could stand there. Some of them will be like the Chuggy from two levels ago where he can like stand like gra he stands on things that are oriented on the right side of the screen as opposed to the bottom and some of them will be left and then by using the action button you can switch between them and you have to switch between them in order to access all the gems on the level. Anyway, I think you get the basic gist of the, the premise. Damn, that was terrible. The premise behind Chuggy. I'm pretty sure that in development these guys are basically just like, we want to make a puzzle game that people are not going to get sick of very quickly because Oop, can I make that? Yeah. People are not going to get sick of very quickly because there's going to be a substantial amount of variety on each level. And I think that's pretty. It's pretty cool. And, uh, oh, okay. I think it's a, an admirable goal. Uh, I don't think Shuggy is a total success. I think, like I said, I, I think the heart was in the right place for this game, and the puzzles I find, uh, although very simplistic, which is actually good for me because I am apparently the stupidest man on earth when it comes to puzzle games. Uh, Although the puzzles are fairly simplistic for me, I just don't think the platforming... Can I rotate on this level? What do I do? No, just switches. Uh, I don't think the platforming controls as well as... Oh, what's going on here? Okay, I... oh, we're... oh, it's a time limit level. Okay, one second. Let's kill ourselves here so we can get restarted. Uh, the controls, basically what I'm trying to get at is the controls don't feel good. They feel floaty as hell a lot of the time. Okay, I think I understand this now. Okay, well, let's speed up time. Like I said, puzzles uh, seem fairly... Oh, that's not enough. Okay, one second. Restart. I think I figured it out. Um, 
Puzzles feel good, but the controls feel really floaty. Like, it doesn't feel as tight as a, as a Braid or a Super Meat Boy. Or even, like, an N+. And N+, for me, is, is an even floatier game uh, than, than the previous two that I've mentioned. But, uh, I don't know, like, I find myself when I'm dying, oftentimes I feel like I'm not dying because of my own failures. I'm dying because... Uh, oh man, that's gonna be fast. Okay, we're gonna make it. Uh, I'm dying because... Like, for one reason or another, like, I slipped off a platform, because, like, this guy controls pretty floatily. Uh, he also has, like, in extreme acceleration. Like, the longer uh, he runs, the faster he goes, which is fine. I mean, to a certain extent, that's expected in platformers. Stand on this bad boy right here. Uh, yeah, like, I guess oh, a little bit more. <laughs> oh, I touched my past self, so I died. Okay. Uh, to a certain extent, like, that acceleration is necessary to make platformers feel natural, but I don't know. The jumping and the running just doesn't feel good enough for me for this to be, like, a, a truly great platformer. But as a puzzle platformer, uh, I think it's pretty decent. It kind of boggles my mind, though. Like, from an aesthetic standpoint, I think this game actually looks pretty bad. Like, I think it looks like a... Whatever. Uh, I think it looks like an Xbox Live Indie Games game, which is something that I mentioned on the, the Saving Progress podcast earlier this week, but I really do think this, this looks like an Xbox Live Indie Games game, and I'm kind of wondering where they're coming from that they, they feel like they can charge 10 bucks for this. I mean, I realize it came out for 800 points on Xbox Live Arcade, which is the equivalent of, of $10, but, uh, you know, I can't help but feel that this game would get more attention. Okay, we made it. Uh, get more attention if it was in the like three to five dollar range. As it is, you know, at ten dollars you're competing with a lot of really, really amb. Oh, this is bad. Um, at ten dollars you're competing with a lot of really, really ambitious stuff. I think I've done this poorly again. Um, so, you know, you have to. Oh, how am I gonna avoid? No, I don't want. Okay. Uh, like I said, you're competing with a bunch of really, really ambitious stuff. Don't. <laughs> I'm losing my train of thought so frequently here. Um, yeah, really, really ambitious stuff, quote-unquote. Uh, so I, I think you have to either make your game a little bit more attractive at those price points, and I'm not going to say that graphics are everything, but, you know, if you tightened up the controls and either A, made this uh, cheaper, or B, made it a little bit more visually cool, I would say. Like, right now, it, it kind of looks like a really generic game to me. Uh <sighs> And I think it will to uh, a lot of people that are just looking at like screenshots and stuff like this. But yeah, so th I think those are your two options. Like, non-option, tighten up the controls. Because right now, for whatever reason, that oh, that's probably not good enough either. This is embarrassing. Uh, for whatever reason, uh, they, they just don't feel satisfying. And maybe it's be it's unfair to the game because I, I, I did play so much Super Meat Boy and, and Braid. Uh, and maybe that's an unfair comparison. Maybe it's just like idiosyncratic differences or something like that. But I think controls need to be tightened up. And either... You need to add something aesthetically to this game to give it like kind of a unique visual style to make it actually enjoyable to look at, or you have to lower your price point uh, in order to make it more attractive to a lot of people, which is fine. I mean, like, let's land on this as quickly as we can. Come on, you can get down there. I think we're gonna be okay. So we'll just wait on this one. Um, but yeah, but I think The Adventures of Shuggy is a game that is is totally competent. Seems overpriced and a, a little under-polished from a graphic pers perspective. Okay, get ready. Uh, from a graphic perspective, this is like playing the kid levels in Super Meat Boy. Oh, okay, we made it. <laughs> um, but yeah, by and large, it's a decent game. I don't think if you buy it for 10 bucks, you're going to be disappointed. There seems to be a lot of levels. Uh, I believe the, the promo material for the game said there were like over 100. And, I, you know, I mean, the levels are fairly short. You can see them here. They're usually... You know, the first time they might take you a little while, but after that they're only going to be like 30 seconds long if you're going to try, try to time trial yourself. Uh, but, you know, by and large, I, I feel like this is a competent game. It's just maybe a little bit overpriced. Let's play some more levels. Maybe we'll see something new. Lava Bat. Watch out for Lava Fish. Okay. That's a good thing to know. Like I said, the game is constantly, constantly introducing new mechanics, which is uh, really nice, actually. I, I enjoy that a lot. And, you know, a lot of this game... Oh, shit, that was terrible. Uh, a lot of games, I, I, I kind of feel like maybe I harp on developers unfairly, and I'll be like, maybe almost like, project onto them and be like, okay, these guys thought they could make a lot of easy money by just like, throwing zombies into this game and their intentions were not in the right place. I feel like with the Adventures of Shuggy, guys who made this game, their heart was in the right place. They wanted to make a, a, a fantastic puzzle game, and they made a decent puzzle game, which is, is cool enough. 
It, it's a game that constantly stays interesting, even if it is a little bit repetitive. So let's do like one more room, and then I'll check out the gallery in here. There is a little bit of a story in the game, but um, like I said, what, what? Oh man, I didn't even notice that guy up there. What episode of this was it when I was mentioning that? I didn't notice that guy either. That's sad. Okay, let's be smart here. Um, I think it was when I took a let's look at it. It was a virus named Tom. Uh, like the, like I said in that video, there is a story here, but it's just kind of the thing where it's like puzzle, 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 then you do... Uh, you, you get a cutscene, and then puzzle, 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 you get a cutscene, puzzle, 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 puzzle. Only I think this game is a little bit less funny, it's a little bit more like cutesy and kitty than, than A Virus Named Tom. But by and large, I feel like this is probably a better puzzle game overall than A Virus Named Tom. I think you'd get more, more time out of this one. A Virus Named Tom seems like it could get repetitive pretty damn quickly. But anyway, you'll get a, a taste of that here, so let's just go in there. So, uh, the premise of this, if I didn't mention it before, is that Shuggy has inherited, like, a haunted house from his grandma or something, and he's just trying to clear it out and make sure that it's a, a nice place to live. So he spots some missing paintings in the gallery, they're on the ceiling, Shuggy avoids them. How can all these paintings be falling? Oh, there's a dude throwing them at him. So, th what's kind of cool, this is, it does have, like, a Super Meat Boy kind of influence to it, for sure. Uh, is that at the end of every level, or I should say, when you get, like, a certain number of keys in every level... Where, where am I looking at here? Um, well, when you get a certain number of keys in every level, you unlock the ability, it's probably right here, yeah, uh, to fight the boss. And fighting the boss works in a very similar way to, like, a Super Meat Boy, where it's gonna be, uh, like, a puzzle platformer fight, for lack of a better word. Oh, actually, you know what, let's... Okay, so we're actually getting introduced to a new mechanic here that I don't know, so I'm gonna shut up for a second. You can retrieve Shuggy's magic rope from the box here by hitting the action button. Shuggy can move around as normal, and the rope will stay attached to him. However, the action button will cause the rope to tighten, allowing Shuggy to swing from it. Okay. So, action button. We got the rope. If we hit the action button again, it causes it to tighten. I think? Yes. Okay. So, what we want to do is get all these. That's kind of cool. That's a neat mechanic. I wonder if this is more central to the game. Let's check out Scaling Shuggy. Make good use of your resizing abilities. Look out for potions that will make you shrink, or cakes that will make you big and grow. Okay, so I assume cake makes us small. Cake makes us big. Oh, yeah. Sorry, Mr. Spider-Man. That was not good. Okay. Do we even need the big one on this one? I feel like we would just need the shrinking potion. Alright, things get super small. We'll come in through here. Oh, we can't. We need to hit the switch first. Alright, let's get the cake. We probably need the cake to make us big enough again, I guess. But we can get it again. Yeah, big cake. So we'll stand on the switch. Not sure if you need to be big to stand on that. But it got the job done, didn't it? Then we'll come back. Oh, that was close. Obviously, when you're bigger, you jump higher. Oh, I don't want to get any bigger. Let's get a shrinking potion. We got a couple of those. And then we'll be able to walk in here. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay, get that. Then get the shrinking potion again. That will allow us to get those gems. Cool beans. I like that the camera shrinks with you. That's pretty neat. You can see the graphical detail on these low levels. Alright, so there's our key there. And I think uh, we'll check out one more level. Like I said, game is constantly introducing new stuff here. Minefield. Careful where you jump. Oh, right, because we have these mines here. We'll just jump around them. Oh, that was not good. This should be very easy considering, you know, how much I've played platformers before in my life. Let's give it one more try. Maybe we'll get lucky, maybe we won't. Okay, here. There. Okay. No problem so far. Drop down like this. Ah, now I've got an issue, okay. Come up here, like I said, super floaty, which is kind of a problem on levels like this. But, you know, even just over the course of this video, the more I play this game, the more I kind of get like an aw shucks, you know what, this is easy enough to recommend. <laughs> like, I came into this not having the most favorable opinion of the game, but the more I play it, it kind of wins me over. Anyway, let's go back to our uh, dungeon here. Probably said that to countless young ladies over the course of my life. Uh, we'll go back to the main menu, and, you know, this is basically what you see is what you get with The Adventures of Shuggy. That's the game. You have co-op as well. I haven't been able to play that as well, but I assume it's only local co-op. Um, yeah, other games from the developers. I really, I thought this was an iOS port the first time I saw it because of this, like, very scant title screen here. But anyway, that's The Adventures of Shuggy. It's ten bucks, which is probably going to be cost prohibitive for a lot of people. Or at least, like, I'm not saying people watching this video don't have ten dollars to spend. But, you know, maybe they would rather spend their money on something else that they've missed from earlier this year than picking up the Adventures of Shuggy. But for those of you looking for, you know, a puzzle platformer game, 
who aren't that concerned if maybe you're buying a game that's only a 7 out of 10 versus like an 8, 9, or 10. Uh, Avengers of Shuggy, totally solid game. Uh, controls are a little bit wonky. I think its heart is definitely in the right place, so I'm going to give this a tentative thumbs up. Even if I came into this wanting to give it kind of like a, a hesitant thumbs down. But in any case, as always, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you next time.